So I've got my um, my own file here, and I imported your reference drawers in. I'm just looking at it. Uh, I'm going to assume this is where your sidewalk needs to be. Uh, first of all, I might have done this already, but I'm going to just place a block uh, here and uh, area hole. Right there, I'm going to use this tool, create, no, create clip train model, uh, look, reference train, that one, clipping element, this one, reset, uh, the name should be clipped, whatever the name of the tin is, let's see if I can, well, external is important. Yeah, and all of my feature definitions should be DNC surf. Um, and let's see, go to the 3D reference, and we're going to what is that's your file. This is the That's that. That's yours. Okay, so this is the tin that we uh, DTM that we just made. Turn the triangles on. Looks good. Keep that on for now. Usually I have it off. Okay. So. Uh, one of the first things I do is I I trace the in-place gutter line and let's do that now. Looks this is interesting. There there looks to be a little bit of what is that? Is that a dead rat right there? A lot of triangles right there, a lot of points, so what do we do? Um, let's start somewhere. Let's start somewhere. I'm not going to hit every point because that would take a long time, but trying to trying to get a good representation as to what's so maybe there's already a ramp here. I didn't look at the map or anything. Looks like the water would probably do something like that. Yeah. Come around here. Boom, boom. It doesn't have to be exact, it's just to give us an idea of what's going on. Uh, so I'm going to call that a good representation of the gutter line flow. And I'm going to extend it out here a little bit. Yeah, there's something, I bet there's a catch basin right there. Well, maybe that's why there's like that dip. 
So it's good to get that. And over here. And I'll just put a point right there. Cool. Now I'm going to use my Create Complex Chain tool. Click that. Automatic. Click. And it did that pretty well. Highlight that again. What I just made. Set feature definition. I'll do everything on pawn first. And now that that's made, that's made in 3D. Let's go to our tasks. So this is made in 3D. And it's... It should... We're, we're going to use this tool called plan by 3d element and there's a little truck right there i think that's a little truck what is that i've always wanted to know it looks like a truck what kind of truck and so we click that or let's for you i'm gonna shut off the 3d reference going into my default reference and let's see that was your yeah so no so I'm in my 2d here's okay I'm gonna re rename <clears throat> My, my 3D reference going into my 2D. I'm going to put that to slot number one. <clears throat> I always like to see that on top. And now if I turn that off, I should just see my clipping bonder I used for my clip tin. I'm going to throw that on a different level. For some reason, my whole career, I've always put stuff on user-defined level, uh, user-defined B, and that's, I always have, I always have that sh level shut off. So now, I don't have anything in my 2D. I just have a 3D line that I drew. Now, once again, I'm going to use this plan by 3D element tool. Click that and locate 3D element, bing, and it, if we look close, here is, here is the original one that I drew, and it created this element here called pawn 2, which is in the 2D view, yeah, pawn 2, and this is its 3D representation. So the original one that I drew, pawn, I'm going to delete that. And let's look at the profile view. First of all, let's make this clip our, our active terrain. Now, if we look at the profile of Pawn 2, the one that we created with the export back, it always it always looks like this. It's it just um, its profile is represented by these by these uh, straight lines, which is weird. But it's kind of nice to know, it, it's kind of like a marker as to, yeah, we must have used that, that tool called Plan by 3D Element. Uh, so when you see this, it's kind of like a reminder, oh, I must have used that tool. So I delete the one that it created for me, 
And what I do, let's see this, that's going to bother me, but that's, let's continue with the process. What I'd like to do, some people might use this as their, their active profile. I don't because, as you can see, it says profile surface type surface profile level GPK. It doesn't tell you where it's from. If we use this tool, quick profile from surface, if we use that tool and then we locate the surface, and then reset to end. Now we should have two profiles here. It says we've got two. One of them is the active surface and the other one is this one. Uh, profile, surface profile, but then it tells you where it's from, clipped S10. And we're going to take that one, and will we, are we going to make that one our active profile? Nope, we're not going to even make that one our active profile. We're going to highlight it, and we are going to use this tool, Create Best Fit Profile, one of my favorite tools of all time. Uh, I'll bring in here the... I always use these parameters, uh, upper envelope 0 0.01, negative 0 0.01, no crest, no, and well, that's about it. And I don't understand this yet, but it wants its own element template. And I've just been using alignment in place, which I actually have renamed it. It's no longer alignment in place. It's alignment in production. So I've kind of usurped their definition of it for my own creative alignment in production. So I'll just click all that. And now you can see I got a nice best fit profile. And that's what I'm going to... That is what going to be my active profile. Wunderbar. And this would this would bother me, this little bump right there, but this this uh, profile is just going to be a a reference. So so there you go. So we made that profile that we thought was the gutter line. Uh, one thing we can do is check, just another check to see whether or not if it is um, a good gutter line profile. Uh, we can turn our contours on. And that gives us that. And then to make them even tighter, we can come up here. Let's see if I can do this. The element information, calculate feature display, contours, just click on contours, and the, the major interval, I always, it's always five, I always just leave it at five, uh, but I change the minor interval to 0 .05, Let's see, and now if we look here, we can see more of what's going on. We know there's a curb there. And looks so it looks looks like we did an okay job of following following it pretty good. So here's that bump right there. I wonder if we could just Let's see, I wonder if we could manually see that. Boom. Turn on our... 
turn on our two, our reference. Let's see, that's yours. Crap. Go back to 3D. Go back to 3D. you to turn off your reference go back to here where was it probably right there right yeah so I need to be more right there and if I turn the triangle back on. Ah, oh, that should be an easy target. So I'm going to go back to the 2D and I'm going to take this point and put it right. Uh, it's not snapping. Why isn't it snapping? Why isn't it not snapping? Because maybe my reference isn't. Yeah. Make that the snap. Now I should be able to snap right on there. There we go. Now if we look at the profile again, looks like we got rid of that, that spike. And well, let's just check that one. Let's see if we can do this. Let's see, that's the 2D. And profile line. Right there, right there. Well, yeah, I don't know if I can do much about that. Maybe move it over to here. And well, there's a little dip right there. Okay, so I'm going to turn the contours off now. And okay. Okay, now some more fun stuff. Let's let's make an edge of pavement. And let's do that by drawing some lines. I'm going to take this line right here that we've did and let's make an offset. I think this is, let's see, bring that over here. Um, single offset entire element, that's it's got a drop down. Um, single offset partials, what I usually use. I, but in this case, maybe we can just do the whole entire thing. Um, let's keep it at alignment in pro production. Offset two negative two. I don't think that matters. Click that, and there's our offset of negative two, of two mirror no. And we're just going to use this as a, as a reference also. So let's draw on top of that what a mathematically perfect two is. Let's, let's see, I'm tired of looking at my DTM. Let's go to the DTM. Grab one of the triangles. Information. Triangles off. Go back to my 2D. And let's draw a that looks, that looks pretty close. Let's see. I want to actually be able to see it. So let's paint that another pond color. And let's come down this way. Let's see. 
rather than let's just change. Draw that again. Geometry pond. I wish I would have gotten more up on top, but we'll see what happens. Now let's put a curve or a simple arc. Uh, this is the tool I, I would usually use. If that doesn't work, arc between elements, I don't know what the difference is. But if one doesn't work, try the other. And, oh, that looks, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Boom. That's nice. So I'm going to get rid of that, uh, that two foot offset from my original gutter line profile. And now I'm going to call this one, go into its properties. And I'm going to trim, let's see, try that again. I'm going to trim the back and a head. So that's going to be both. And now I'm going to complex by element. Boom. And that is going to be my, the start of, of a lot. That's my, let's rename that my edge of pavement number one. And we'll leave that on pond for now. No, we're going to change it to alignment in production. That's right. Complex element EOP alignment in production. Okay. Boom. Stop. So now we have our our alignment that we're going to put our our template on our our civil cell on just for kicks let's go look at the edge of the profile for that and that looks that looks workable and i'm always curious let's bring in your your design so this is a critical area right here let's well, let's see i don't want to see that text anymore Go to your turn off by element. Uh, let's see what that, this is going to be a problem. Zoom out, there we go. So it's this area right here. Oh, there's, oh. Well, that's, well, that's a crest. That'll, that'll be nice. So we're no, we're no, we're going to, be in between. Let's maybe go from here to there. We're at 1.1. 1. 1. 1. That's pretty flat. That's awesome. So, okay, Shaw. So let's, well, well, Shaw's going to call me, so I better stop this recording. But until he does, let's go look for my civil cell. And that would be a reference. So let's go to here, to DM Ross. Let's see if I can do this magnified. Um, Non-projects. Design, 
Design groups, design six, file five, cry one mic, and civil cells, and let's see, no. Looks like I'm getting a call. I'll stop. Uh, let's go look for my ADA civil cells. Uh, we're in the default view. Let's. I always just attach a 2D seed so I can use the. So I can use the browse function of it. And, and where is it? So I know that one has it. Okay. And that has something in it. That's my work, but I know that if I live nest that, Here's the ADA civil map. I will make a direct attachment for that one. Then I will delete my file. ADA civil cell. There that is. And I want to have that live nested. Give that a chance. That took a lot of time. I'm glad I paused the video there. Uh, let's level override so that the I put some overrides in there to make it look nice. And let's move this over to the project. And let's see, move that over to here. Boom. And I know there's a lot, there's a lot here, but I think the ones I'll be using are right there. Okay, so these are, so this is, um, these are my civil cells and I basically made them look like the ADA curb ramp details. So I thought that was a nifty idea. And which one do we want to use? We could use, um, Let's see, oh, if I put the, I do actually have one here that looks a lot like yours, directional ramp, walkable, or that one maybe. And that one's, that one uses surface temp or surface DTMs, surface templates on DTMs. In fact, all of these do, and that's, I think that was a good grandiose idea, but this one, these three don't. These mainly are civil cells that have the curb height and the gutter pan slope and the berm slope and a sidewalk in the template locked. 
So these are pretty nice. And I'll go into, I'll, I'll talk about those in depth. But let's just choose one. Let's see, let's get rid of your, and now we just have this one right there. And I know we're gonna be looking for a, a line to put our zero height curb on. So let's do that. Doesn't need to be a smart line, can be any line. And I'll put that right there. And then let's grab, let's grab this one. Yeah, why not? No, let's grab this one. Civil cell, place the civil cell. And it's looking for zero height curb, which is that marker right here. And now it's looking for locate reference element, the edge of pavement, which is right here. And something's not working. I'm going to escape. And what I don't have, I don't have an active profile yet on my edge of pavement. So let's come into here. And let's... Let us make one. So that's not the profile I will use. Get back to that later. Let's see if we can put our, no, let's use the top one now. Place civil cell, zero height curb, edge of pavement, boom. And that's what it should look like, the, these these elements should appear on the outside of the edge of curb, opposite of where your ramp's at. Right click, left click, accept. Boom, there we go. And let's turn our 3D off. So now we have some nice flares. There's our sidewalk. Let's bring in your design again. Oh, let's see. Um, I'm going to color yours all gray for clarity. And it looks like here's your zero height curb over here. So let's see if we can move that. That looks good. And I'm going to line that up a little bit better. A little bit better. Doesn't have to be perfect. lined up and this uh, this element right here has the width of the ramp tied to it and we want to we want to move this out to your other zero height curb we're going to grab one of these arrows I don't know which one all I know is that the right one moves all of the arrows at the same time this is the wrong one so I'm going to grab this one. Now those are all moving and I'm going to come over here. I'm not going to click on anything. I'm just going to line it up by sight. That'll move that. And and that's, uh, that's setting in my civil cell. So I need to talk about the civil cell. I'll do that in another video. So 
So um, going back to thinking about the profile of what's going on here, uh, let's. I'd like to see what what's going on here. Graph. Um, I'm going to try to find the geographic coordinate system for this. And you didn't have yours. Uh, your you didn't have. You, usually, I would like just piggyback off of what the reference is, but I don't think you put one in your reference. So let's just try to go find the uh, county of where this project's at, and then we'll attach that. So I'm um, looking at this is uh, Trunk Highway 95-820842. And let's go to my bag of tricks. And let's see, I'll bring that so you can see what I'm doing. Um, is it in timesheets? Um, design, probably in design. Bag of tricks. It's not in design either. Here we go. I found it. It's in uh, my EDMS folder. And I think this website right here, if we go to it. Brings us to this one. Let's go to the other one. Close. That one. Try it again. Crap. Okay. Try that one again. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, so I finally found it. Um, it's just the website right here. Um, it's just a good thing to know. So it's so I think it's going off into the so I don't think I made that in my last video. Open location in Google Maps. Open location in Google Maps. And I think the I think the water this water right here is coming down and getting put into this catch basin and all the water over here I think is if this is still the low point it's draining off into this beautiful little piece of water. Scape. Let's go back to microstation scape and Let's look at our edge of pavement profile. Here's the way I do profiles. So once again, this is our low point where it's going to drain off into the, the swamp. So let's keep that a low point. And this is how I do all of my ADA profile, edge of pavement profiles. Let's get our vertical tools up here. Vertical. Start with profile offset transition. A single offset. I'm going to start here and keep the offset at 0.2 just so that we can see it. Bring that over there. 
Make another one at the beginning. Bring that over here. We'll keep this. This is the first one that we did, um, and that's just a marker as to where our opening is. We can fine tune that now. Let's see, that's really close. Zoom that up here. That's really close. I'm going to put a marker right there. And I'll put another dumb line or put a marker right here. Okay, so I'm going to take the original line that I made. I'm going to so now that we've made the our design profile, the edge of pavement profile number one are active. Uh, now we can come to the the gutter line profile in our that we've made with our template, and let's look at the profile for that to see if there's any problems. And And it looks like we've got positive flow. Oh, no, we're going in. So it looks like we've got positive flow going, and then it just goes all the way off of our grid. And maybe, I mean, maybe the water will drain over here, but it's gonna, it's, we've got positive flow is the, is the most important thing. And if we look at our civil cell, which we haven't done yet, uh, let's let's look at a cross section of what's going on here. Um, I think we can drop our civil cell now, which it's a lot easier working with it if it's dropped. Uh, go into a cross section view. Okay, it starts off with a grass berm with a sidewalk in the back. That's what this is. This is the edge of the grass berm, and this is the back of the sidewalk. And if we click through this, oh, our everything is normal. And then right about here, we start going, transitioning to a zero height curb. Get to there. Now we're at the zero height curb, and our flare, our our flare transition from the grass berm to the ramp, and keep going. There's our ramp going through a ramp. Now we're on the other side of the zero height curb, and then a couple of clicks, and we'll start transitioning back to our full height. And our grass berm is re-emerging after the taper. And if we look really closely at the gutter profile, gutter pan profile, which is something that if you do this not with the civil cell, I always forget. But you can see that transitioning from a here's a point zero uh, point six or a point zero six to a point zero three. So that makes it compliant. And that makes it really nice. There's so that's a zero three going to the the curb, uh, the berm slope up to the sidewalk. And I think this by let's see, I don't, I don't know if let's see, maybe I can put a can I get a dimension on there? No, why not? I don't know, but 
the the civil cell when it brings that in we look at the water bucket for this template all of these elements right here they're snapped to my zero marker this element is snapped to the zero marker this element right here is snapped to the previous element and the cool thing about parametric constraints is that you can link snap parametric constraints to plan view elements or actually um, probably any elements maybe even 3d elements so when I made these um, berm slopes curb heights curb slopes and the flare slider which I'll explain in a little bit uh, those parametric constraints constraints are all linked to this external geometry right here so that when I do move a this element if, if you look at the numbers in my water bucket boom those all update and I'll uh, I'll control Z but notice that they all update they're all linked to the, that external geometry and that just makes uh, that just makes everything pretty pretty nifty and with that I'll stop this video